I'm Scott Morris and uh, the little uh, piece that I just played is just a variation actually from Fernando Sor's variation of the theme of, theme of Marlboro, Opus 28, um, Marlboro Variations. And um, I thought I would play that uh, because you know it's short and it's, it's fun. And uh, the other thing is it really kind of helps illustrate uh, the, the, the kind of main point of uh, what I'd like to talk about um, for the next few minutes which is a good hand position, holding the guitar in the right way, sitting position, posture, all that good stuff. So something like I just uh, played, because of you know, all the jumping around and you know, the bars and things like that, if the uh, guitar is not in the ideal position, in other words, that neck in just the right place, it makes it awfully hard um, to do what's already awfully hard. So why would you wanna put yourself through, through even more um, of that? So what I'd like to do first is just talk about um, you know a couple little things. I'm going to go through, talk about chairs. I'm going to talk about your sitting position in the chair. I'm going to talk about the footstool as well as you know a couple other little uh, devices. You know, ergo plays and dinerette cushions and all the various um, things out there. Um, you know, then a little bit more on posture and uh, hand position. Then I'm just going to show you a couple little exercises. Um, you can uh, practice to uh, make sure that you are indeed holding the guitar in, in the right position. Okay, so let's talk about the chair first. The chair is one of the most important things um, to a classical guitar player in that if the chair is the wrong height, then it can make playing much more difficult. And again, you know, we, we want to make playing as easy as possible. To be out of position with the guitar um, is uh, definitely uh, going against that. So the chair, it's in the simplest terms, um, the taller the player, the, the higher the chair. Um, the shorter the player, the shorter the chair. Um, you know, there are some exceptions to that, uh, depending on body type and things like that. I have a friend who has an incredibly long torso and tiny little legs and, you know, you know he's really tall but you know he uses shorter chairs because it really has more to do with like the length of the leg than uh, than anything else but you know just for simplicity so the, the taller pl player needs a taller chair now here's what happens if you are in a chair that's too short if you're in a chair that's too short and uh you know your leg is sort of forced up like this because it's so short um you're going to be in this really tough kind of position where you're almost you know falling back um, and if you're in a chair that's too high, the guitar comes down too much, so it's out of position that way. So you don't want it to be too high or too low. You want it to be, you know, just, just right. Um, so, you know, the chair really matters. Now, th this chair that I'm sitting in here at uh, Guitar Salon um, is, uh, is great. It's, it's, it's an artist bench, um, you know, sort of like for, for pianists, so it's adjustable. Um, you can move it up or down. But, um, you know, the problem is a lot of people, they just sort of take the chair that's available. You know, it's, that's the chair that was in the practice room, or that's the chair that was, you know, in the kitchen or whatever. That's the only chair in the house without arms on it. Um, I think, you know, we've got to be way, way pickier than that. So make sure that you get a chair that is the, the right height for you. Now, the second part is you've got to find a way to elevate the guitar. Um, it's, it's not just the chair, right? So. You know, the traditional way of elevating the guitar for a classical guitar player is to use a footstool. And, you know, the footstool here is uh, an adjustable footstool. And I, I really feel strongly that you need to have an adjustable footstool. If you don't have an adjustable footstool, um, and there are a lot of fancy footstools out, that, out there that, that are just that, they're just these, you know, static uh, footstools, well, then you won't be able to fine tune the the, the height of your, of your foot and of your leg. So, uh, you know, you really need to be able to, you know, adjust for maybe not the perfect chair and be able to bring the guitar up or down a little bit. Um, now, the footstool is not the only 
thing out there. Um, to, to be honest, I, I don't use a footstool that much. Um, I'm more partial to, to these little guys here. Um, this is called an ErgaPlay, and th this is one of the earlier models of ErgaPlay. Here, it's a very simple one. And uh, you know, the way this works is, you know, you just sort of put this on your leg here, and then the suction cups stick to the, uh, to the guitar there. And uh, it's great, because then you can have both feet flat on the ground, which is, you know, actually much more sort of ergonomically, um, you know, preferable. Um, hence the term ErgoPlay, right? And there are a few other uh, companies that make these things. This is just the one that I, that I know. Um, there are some other things out there. There's you know, a pillow that's been around for, for at least 20 years. I, I seem to remember those coming onto the scene in the early 90s. I could be wrong, but um, you know, maybe, maybe sooner. But Dynarec cushions, they're little leather kind of tear dropped or comma shaped cushions that go on your leg. And, those come in a couple different sizes too. Um, my problem with those is that they're they're not really adjustable, and they always feel a little bit unstable. But um, you know, for some players, they're they're just just perfect. Um, I use one of those when I teach uh, my students at the university because it's uh, so easy and convenient here. But but here I've got the footstool. Okay, so how high do you want the guitar to be? And um, you know what what I was taught and what uh, you know seems to work you know really well. Uh, for me and other players that I know and you know, my, my old teachers, things like that, is if you look directly to your left, you should be looking right at your tuners here. So if, if it was down like that, I looked to my left, you know, my line of sight is well over that. The guitar is too low, so it's, it's way down there. If I look over here and <laughs> the next way up there, uh, then that's, that's, uh, that's too high. Although I, I have seen a number of people who play with that neck really high. I, I'd say if you had to deviate from the norm, um, the better players, the neck tends to come up more than down. You know, I mean, somebody like Paul Galbraith is, is, is kind of an extreme example, but you know, he plays it almost like a cello. So I would say at least this high or higher if that's comfortable, but definitely not, not lower. It's, it's really tough um, on the, uh, the classical guitar to have that neck down too low. And for reasons that I'll get into more in a minute, just having to do with uh, hand position. Okay, so before we really get into, you know, all those other little things, just a, a couple other little uh, technical things you, you want to think about here. Once you do get that guitar to the right height here, it's important that it lean back a little bit. And, um, you know, there are a couple reasons for this. You know, there are at least three, probably more. Um, the, the, the first reason is, uh, is one that's pretty well known, and that is that the guitar is kind of like a speaker, the way it's designed. You know, the soundboard is a little bit like the cone of a, uh, of a speaker. Um, the sound hole, obviously, sound projects out from it. You know, just some ambience around it as well, but, uh, you know, more out. The guitar's louder when you're in front of it than when you're behind it. So the idea is, if you lean it up, it'll fill the room more than if you're pointing it down like that. So that's one reason the guitar is a directional instrument. The other you know, reason, well, one more reason, is the arm is much less stressed when it's leaning back a little bit. So the arm can kind of come and just sort of drape like that. If it's like this, it kind of drags your shoulder forward, puts a lot of pressure on your forearm right here, which isn't so good either. Um, you know, other good reasons, I can see it. How about that? So I look down and I can actually see the sixth string all the way through to the first string, as well as all of the frets. You know, not that you need to be staring at your guitar the whole time, but you know, I, I'd like to have the option if I want to look down and see what's going on. So um, you can actually see it this way as well. And you know, numerous other reasons. So there you have some, some really good reasons, hopefully um, you've been persuaded to uh, try that. Lean, lean the guitar back a little bit and uh, I think you'll, you'll like the results. Okay, so let's get into some specifics as far as the, the hands go. And um, let's start with the, the, the right arm here. And uh, you know, once you're in that sort of ideal playing position, so you're in a chair, you're sitting at the front of the chair, you're not leaning back, you're not collapsing your back, but you're sitting at the front of the chair, right? And so it's not a totally straight up, but uh, a balanced position. You wanna feel like you can kind of go in any direction. You're not feeling any extra strain on your lower back. Shoulders are nice and, and relaxed, even not like that, not like that, right? Now, once you're in that relaxed position, take your right arm and just sort of drop it 
to the right side of your body and then just bring it forward like that and it'll just sort of naturally find you know a good ready position so um, you know again just sort of take the arm shake it out free of tension and then just sort of let it drop okay so you know if you do that you shouldn't end up in like a you know position or you know something like that if you do it right and you stay relaxed it should be right about like that relatively straight wrist here slightly elevated right we've covered that in other videos so um, won't go into too much more detail there on that okay but it needs to just sort of feel like that's where your arm is going to go see if you're way over here look what it does to my shoulder my elbow completely out of position relax shoulder bring the elbow use the forearm um, bring the elbow up with the, uh, the sorry bring the forearm up with the elbow and you're right there now the left arm same idea relax it sort of shake it out and then just sort of bring it up right you get the guitar in position here see if the guitar is too low and I bring it up look what happens so then what do I have to do well I have to adjust that's why you see some people they get all sideways like this that's because the guitar is out of position you bring that guitar into position look what happens to my posture so suddenly my shoulders are much more level than before right not hunching or anything like that and now the arm just sort of comes up right now the next thing you want to make sure you can do is can you keep that that good ready position with the left hand you know that we've talked about in other videos and that I've talked about in my book where you have really sort of leaning to the left here with your first finger your second finger two it's a little bit more straight on your third finger three here a little bit more to the right and your pinky leaning somewhat to your 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 right so left straight straight right can you keep that position in different positions on the fretboard right so that's sort of what we're we're, we're going for here so let's just do a couple simple little exercises to uh, see if we can uh, if we can uh, keep that hand in position so something like uh, really straightforward chromatic scale your hand should stay in position right. you can actually use the elbow a little bit to help you prepare for that if you're going that way but that's you know the next thing I wanted to, to mention is you've got to watch that elbow over here. This is all about, this video is about staying, you know, in, in the most relaxed state as possible when you play. Um, one problem that I used to have um, when I was uh, an undergrad studying guitar in college was my elbow would sometimes come up like this when I played and put a lot of strain on my uh, shoulder here and on my neck and on my back and drags your hand out of position as well. A lot of players don't even realize that they're doing it. It took a long time for me to become aware of that elbow coming up like that. Um, the thing that helped me get over that the most, once you know, I, I recognized that I was doing that, was I would always find a practice room uh, with a mirror. And you know, I would just sort of watch myself in the mirror. And as soon as that started to happen, you know, I'd, I'd teach myself what that feels like. What does it feel like when it starts to go up like that? As soon as you know what that feels like, you can start to stop it. The, the problem people have when something like that is happening is they don't know that it's happening. So you need to be aware of it first. Okay, another little exercise you can kind of play around with, you know, if you know the uh, little crab exercise, something like that. if the guitar was out of position it's darn impossible so you know something like that requires a lot of you know you know well requires nearly perfect hand position your thumb if it's coming up like this you're just not going to be able to you know get those fingers in exactly the, the spots that they need to uh to be in there um and you know as far as the right hand goes you know that elbow positioning here you know that mostly has to do with positioning on the the guitar for your hand position so if you were playing a PIMA arpeggio on the top four strings, be aware of you know where the thumb is in the elbow. And then if you need to come down, I, I pivot from the elbow a bit here. Pivot like that. 
says something like, so it just has to do with, again, finding the, the right hand position and then putting the guitar in a position where you've got a chance to at least get your hands in the right position. So it's about access. And if your guitar is over here, or if your guitar is like that, or if it's too high or too low, you're simply not gonna be able to get the hands in the right position to be able to play. So again, you know, playing the, the, the guitar, um, the classical guitar um, uh, in, in this case, is one of the most difficult things um, that I certainly can think uh, to do. Um, it's the most difficult thing I do. And uh, to make it harder than it has to be is uh, definitely not um, something that I would think is a, a very appealing idea. So play around with these ideas. Um, and again, I, I go into even more detail in, uh, in my book series, Classical Guitar Complete. This is mostly covered in volume one, although it's covered in volume two as well. So um, if you have any questions um, that maybe you'd like me to address in future videos, feel free to uh, leave that request in the comments section below, and I will do my best to get to that as soon as I can. So uh, keep practicing and look forward to seeing you in future videos.